Hey guys, it's Kate and in this tutorial I will show you how to draw an eye. So we will be looking at the eye from the perspective of anatomy and how it's built and I will show you how to understand the structure of an eye better so that you are able to draw a more realistic eyes in your illustrations or paintings or drawings. So let's start with looking at the eye first. So here I have an example of an eye and you can see that this is just a generic eye. I found it on Pixabay. You can find the reference yourself as well. But in this eye, we can see that the eye is not a flat shape. So by a flat shape, I mean that you probably all know that you have seen these eye drawings. Oh, there we go. These eye drawings that are kind of almond shape with that circle in the middle representing an eye. So this is the eye that we will not be drawing in this lesson. We will be drawing a more realistic eye. So let's take a look at this eye, also in grayscale, so you can see the values better. So this helps us see the dimension of the eye. The first thing that we need to know about the eye is its shape. So its shape is a ball. So you might have heard about the eyeball. So it's basically a ball. Our eye resembles a ball inside. And this is the eyeball, this is the part that sits inside our skull and allows us to see. Everything else is just skin, a slit in the skin that allows us to blink and moisten this eyeball. So the eyeball is a sphere. So let's imagine, let's draw just a sphere and let's imagine that there's light hitting from this side. So this is basic drawing and how would you shade this sphere? If the light was hitting from top left. So I will get to why we're doing this. It's just very important to understand this um, in the beginning. So here we have the cast shadow, but which we will not need with an eye because it's inside of our skull, but let's just talk about the sphere. And then this sphere will have the core shadow, so it's the shape shadow that there is on the sphere, the reflected light, so this must be darker, And then we will have also a highlight. Let me take some white. We will have a highlight. Because it's moist, it's going to have this bright highlight. So this is our basic sphere. Let's just add a bit more shading here. So if you look at an eyeball, this is what we get, a sphere. Then on our eyeball we have an iris. So pay attention to the fact that the iris is basically almost as large as half of our eyeball. So this is going to be the size of our iris. And then we have the pupil inside. The pupil varies depending on the lighting conditions, depending on the emotional um, mood of the person you are drawing. It can dilate and it can become very small just like a dot, like this. So it's basically a muscle that kind of allows us to see clearer. So this is the iris, let's shade it in. And one more thing to actually pay attention to, as we spoke about the sphere, if we look at the eye, it's not white, so it's gonna have a core shadow to it, just like any sphere would. So we're still having the same light direction, right? So we're not going into eyelids yet. We're just drawing this, and now we're going to darken the pupil a bit, the iris a bit. So this is our iris. For now I'm drawing in black and white, so just that to pass the idea clearer on. So, as we look at our eye, if we sample colors from here, it's not going to be white anywhere. So in the whitest whites, it's not going to be white it's going to be still have some color to it. So our eyeball is never white, even though it might look white. The same we can do here. It's still off-white. If we take pure white and we put it next to this color, you can see how much different it is. But let's get back to our eyeball. So our eyeball will have a highlight on it. And for the sake of this tutorial, just to create that sharp contrast, so we will have this highlight somewhere here, right? From the light that's shining. 
Now, what do we do with our iris? So if we look at an iris, I will show you how our eye looks in profile. This is our eyeball in profile, so let's draw it out. Let's take the right color. So we're going to draw out the eyeball as we see it here and construct it. So as we understand how to place those lights and shadows on our iris so that it looks three-dimensional. So this is our eyeball from profile in profile. And now let's look. So this is the part where our iris will be approximately half the size of the height of the eyeball. And it slightly kind of goes inward. So this is the pupil. And then on top here, this part here is called a cornea. So this cornea protrudes from the eyeball. And it's a transparent film that protects our eye. And this cornea is transparent, so you can see clearly here. It's transparent. And when we have the light hitting our cornea, let's take this white light, it hits our cornea if we have the same light setting as here. It's going to travel through it. So the light is going to go in this direction still, right? So, but if we look at our uh, pupil here and the iris, it creates a kind of a this shape. Let's imagine that there's a dish. So it's going to be like going inwards, in, 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 in. And if we have this light setting here, the light is not going to hit this side of the iris, but it will hit more this side of the iris, right? So the, the one that is here. So as cornea lets the light through, the opposite side from the highlight is always going to be lighter on the iris. So just to make it clearer here, let's do the same thing. So we have the light hitting the cornea. We know that there is a protrusion here on the eyeball. By the way, if you close your eyes and you touch with your fingers on the top on your top eyelid and you move your eyes left to right, you will feel that cornea moving. So that's the protrusion of the cornea on the iris. Now let's put our highlight here. And as the light travels through the cornea, bounces off this side of our iris, it creates a lighter color here. So you can clearly see it here. Let's take some red. So this is our highlight. We have the light hitting it like this. And here is the lighter part of our iris. So if we take, let's do it here so it's clearer. We're going to take the colors around here. So this is the color around our highlight. You can see how dark that is. And this is the color on the opposite side. There we go, got it. I need to zoom in closer a bit. I managed to catch that lightest color. So, and this is the color on the opposite side. You see the difference here. So, the same thing goes here. If we take the color from around the cornea here, uh, around the, sorry, around the highlight here, it's going to be darker than the color in here. You can see the difference. So it's a very simple rule that every time that you have a highlight on the other side, it's going to be lighter. And then pay attention also, as the cornea is transparent, there's also a lighter part here in the eye. You can see this one. And if we go here, it's going to be darker. So it kind of creates that lighter aura around the iris as well sometimes, depending on the light conditions. So let's go further. So we know this much about our eyeball. Let's remove this. We don't need it. Now, let's talk about the eyelids. And for this, I wanted to show you a picture of Michelangelo's David. So let's erase these so they don't bother us. So here we have David. And as you know, the famous statue and it's very interesting to look at the statues because the anatomy is so much more clearly visible in statues than in real people. So here you can see the eye in three-quarter view and you can see the eyelids. So let's take some red. Oh, there we go. So here you can see that we have the top eyelid that curves all around our eyeball. 
you can see this line going all around the eyeball. It doesn't go straight like this. It doesn't cover the eyeball this way. It covers the eyeball. It goes all the way around the eyeball. That was the crookedest line I think I've drawn. So here we go. This is our top eyelid. And here, let me remove this. You can see that this part is actually in the shadow because we have light coming from this direction. And this part is in the shadow and this is the thickness of that top eyelid. So if I were to draw it here, straight on, I would see very few of that thickness, but there still would be some thickness. So it would be the part that curves away from the light. And this is the thickness of the top eyelid. So our eyelids, they're not just, uh, uh, I don't know, like a film that covers our eye. They actually have a thickness to it. And then we have the same thing going for the bottom eyelid here. There is also thickness to it. So you can see, and this one, as we're drawing it, add the tear duct here. And this one here, it catches the light. If we have our light hitting this eye from this direction, so this eyelid is gonna curve away. So let's draw it out better. This eyelid here will catch the highlight also, and then it's going to curve away from the light together with our eyeball. But this eyelid here, the top of this lower eyelid, if the light is coming from above, is going to catch a highlight on it. As you can see it clearly here, I'm gonna delete this now. So we can see here is our highlight. Oh, all right, let's take the red. Here is our highlight on the lower eyelid, and here is our highlight on the upper, high, upper eyelid, and this eyelid is in shadow underneath, and the lower eyelid also will have a shadow, so as it curves together with our eyeball, you can see it clearly here, that it goes under, it tucks kind of, goes together with the shape of the eyeball, and as it curves away from the light, it's going to have a shadow on it as well. And then it's going to go into the cheek and become lighter here, gradually. So this is where the part where the cheek starts. So this far we have our eye. So if we were to draw it here on this, um, on this profile view of the eye, then we would draw it as a curvature along our eyeball. So this is one eyelid. It's going to curve. And this is going to curve here. This is going to catch the light. And then it's going to be, become less bright here as it curves away from the light. But on this side, it's going to catch the most light. And then, this is our upper eyelid. Then, one more thing to remember is that here, this eyelid kind of folds inside. The skin folds inside around the eye, uh, towards the eyeball, and you can see it here, uh, there we go, with the closed eye. You can see how much skin we still have available that kind of folds inwards, and this creates this occlusion shadow, this part here, you see the darker part here. So this is the occlusion shadow where the skin folds in on itself. So this part is always going to be dark. Sometimes, um, depending on your heritage, depending on the race, depending on how your eyes slits are um, on your head, on your face, depending on that, sometimes you will not be able to see the full upper eyelid. It's going to be hidden by this part of the skin here. So it's kind of getting to tuck in it. But there's still an upper eyelid. Remember that. And... Then from here, it goes higher up into the eyebrow. So we have an eyebrow here. And as you see clearly in this picture, so depending again on your heritage, on the racial um, traits and many other factors, and especially men, they have this eyebrow ridge more protruding than females, uh, than women. <laughs> so this eyebrow ridge, uh, it has to do with the skull. If you look at the skull, you will feel clearly, even if you touch your own skull um, right where your eyebrows are, you will feel that there's a ridge kind of protruding. So this is going to catch light, if we have light shining from here, the same way as this catches light here, and then it casts a shadow on the eye. 
And the same we have here. The eyebrow ridge catches light here, and then it casts the shadow on the eye. Sometimes there are such pronounced eyebrow ridges that can cast a shadow on all of the eye. So, and also depending on how the light sources are in any given situation, how they are located. So we got this far. So let's draw this tucking in of the skin. So this goes wraps all the way around. Let's finish this drawing. And our upper lid usually is kind of overhanging our lower lid. So I made a mess here, I'm gonna fix it. So this lid goes all the way around our eye. Then let's think about this lid as a 3D object and what does it do? So if we look here, you can clearly see that line that is darker right under this upper lid. So here we have a shadow that is coming, that is being cast off from our upper lid. This is the part here. And you can see it also here in this colorful image. Let's get rid of these so you can clearly see it. So we will have a shadow. Let's darken it up a bit here. And usually you will have your... Not dark enough. There we go. This is going to make it darker. So this upper lid, it casts a shadow onto our eyeball. And this shadow curves together with the shape of the eyeball as well. So here it's going to be lighter, as you see here it's lighter, and here it becomes darker. Because this part of the eye receives more light. Because of the light source that comes like this. So, we have to remember these shadows. What's happening here? Let's... Yes, there we go. So, this is the basic anatomy of our eye, and let's not forget the tear duct. So there is a tear duct here. And it's usually dark as it kind of tucks inside, but as it's moist, you will usually see uh, highlights, some highlights on it too, here. And here we can see, for example, this highlight that I was talking about, the shape of the eyeball, it's round, the light is hitting this side, that's why this part is light, and also this part catches the highlight here. And the tear duct is completely away from the light here, in this example. Also, one more thing I forgot to add is about how to how we close our eyes. Pay attention that our lower lid basically stays the same and our upper lid goes all the way towards our lower lid. So eyes don't close like shutters, so we don't have something like this. Our upper lid goes all the way towards our lower lid. So now we can draw our eyes Oh, and one more thing that I wanted to talk about highlights. So I know that many beginners do this mistake. I did it myself. So let's look here. This is the lightest part of our highlight, right? And now let's take pure white and put it next to it. And you can see that it's not white. So highlights will never be white. They usually have some color to them and it has to do with the surroundings because we have everything that's around us reflecting in our eyes in the highlight. So, for example, here the window is reflecting, and we also see the shape. So, depending on the light source, if it's warm or cool light, our highlight is going to have a color to it. Then what object is reflecting in the highlight? So, in this case, it's a window here, and we can see the sky, clearly sky and trees in there, because we have greens and blues in there that mix together with our eye color as well a bit. So it's very important to remember that, let's get rid of David here. It's very important to remember that the highlights will never be completely white. You can add some very bright white in a dot somewhere in the highlight just to intensify it. But if you draw colorful highlights, that's going to bring more realism and more. it's going to make your portraits more interesting. So that's another thing to remember. And also the shape of the highlight will reflect the light source. If it were a lamp, it would be something like round like this. Let's take, for example, a warmer color, warmer green. So it could be something like this, a bit brighter. It could be something like this if it were a lamp shining onto her eye. So now we can draw the eye. So I'm going to take my 
a new layer. Let's make a new layer. Let's hide these. Let's hide her eyes closed. There we go. And so let's draw an eye and using all of the knowledge that we learned. So here I'm going to start with the eyeball. It's going to be a quite large eye. So this is my eyeball. And this is my iris. So it's quite big. There we go. The pupil. Then we have this eye shape. So usually in calm uh, settings, in a calm mood, our upper eyelid is going to cover slightly our iris. And here we have our lower eyelid, and usually you can see the shape that it goes slightly down and then up. But it all depends on the people, on how their eye slits are, and every eye is going to be different. But the basic anatomy is here. So this is our... Um, too large here. This is our tear duct. Now, this eyelid here, the upper eyelid, it's just generic eye that I'm coming up with as I go. And then we have the lower eyelid here that's going to have this line showing us where the cheek then begins. Let's draw out the circle around our iris but better because usually iris on the outside on the very outside of the iris is darker and the pupil is always in the middle so don't draw it somewhere to the side and then we will have this eyebrow ridge so let's lower it a bit and the eyebrow is going to cast a shadow here so this part it kind of catches more highlight if we are, let's, let's do another uh, scenario with light. Let's do it from the other side. So we ha we'll have it. Let's take away these. Oh, there we go. So we are not tempted to look at them. So we have the light coming from this side. Now, which parts? will catch the light and which parts will face away. So this is a great exercise to do without having a reference, just thinking logically which parts will catch more light and which will catch more, uh, which will be in the shadow. So now, if I have this eyeball, do I still have it here? It's round. If we see, then it's going to have a shape shadow all the way like this here. And we can actually draw this one out in color. Let's add another layer and we're going to make an eye color. So let's make a bigger brush. Just, oh, okay, went crazy. Went crazy. Smaller brush. So let's color this in. It's going to be our area around the eye. I'm gonna, oh, okay, I was drawing on top, sorry for that. Just gonna create another layer here. Okay, so here we can color it in with our skin color. Let's color it all the way around. And now we're going to, I'm just going to fix it here so it doesn't go into our eyeball. Now we're going to think about, oh, now we're going to think about lights and shadows. So first let's also color in our eyeball, which is not going to be completely white. It's going to have some tint to it slightly pinkish. So this is our eyeball. There we go. And also the tear duct. Let's color it in. You can color it pink here for now. And let's make, I have green eyes, so let's make some 
pretty green eyes. Okay, that's two. <laughs> okay, let's choose it here. Let's choose something like this. Okay, this is a green color for our eyes. So let's go all the way around our iris. So now this eye looks flat, right? Because it doesn't have any shading to it. It's just a flat eye. What we're going to do is, let's start with our um, eyeball. So we're going to choose the color of our eyeball and go slightly darker. And our shadow here is going to be, as our light is hitting the eyeball here, so it will catch a highlight here, but as it's covered by the skin, it's inside our skull, we won't see the highlight, but we will see the shape shadow. So this part is going to be darker. It's going to be turned away from the light. And this part is going to be lighter. We can even go slightly darker, even darker than this just to make a more dramatic lighting conditions. So you can see already we're starting to get shape to it. Okay, so as it tucks away from our light source completely here, we can even go darker in this corner here. There we go. Now, our iris catches the highlight. So let's choose our color and let's go slightly lighter this way. And it's going to catch our highlight somewhere here, right? Let's pretend that this is a round light source. And then... Oh, okay, and then we're going to go and... into some lighter color. Ooh. I'm crazy. So we're going to go into some lighter color here on the opposite side, right? Because it creates that um, passing of the light, the cornea is going to give us that passing of the light from the light source, the light uh, highlight, it goes onto the opposite side of our iris. Now, what we lack is this side of the iris has to be darker because this side, as we were saying, that iris is kind of a bowl and it curves, this side curves away from the light. We will have to have it darker. So let's choose a darker color, a darker green. Let's choose some cooler green here. And I'm just going to add a bit of color here around this side. As this part of our iris is kind of curving away from the light. So you can already see that there is this shape happening here. Now, I'm going to use this color just to intensify that. Oh. Actually, I'm going to use a darker color, actually a darker green, Let's stick with the green, to give that edge to our pupil, because usually it has this darker rim around it. So, like this. And then here, sometimes we can see this kind of a uh, highlight, uh, a reflex light happening on the other side of our pupil that kind of shines through the cornea. Actually, it's going to be more to the bottom. So on the opposite side of the highlight here, there's going to be a bit of light shining from our iris. Now, so far, so good. What we need now is to give some color to our eyelids. And let's take a darker color. And here is going to be that occlusion shadow. It's actually going to be even darker than that. So this is the occlusion shadow happening where the skin folds inside on itself. So here it goes darker and also this part here, the lower side, the side that shows us the thickness of our eyelid is going to be darker. So we will not see it fully but we will still notice that it's darker. Just a glimpse of it. Then let's take a slightly darker color than our skin color and let's give it some um, definition here on top. So we know that this area here is going to catch more light because it's protruding towards us and this is going to catch more shadow as it's away from the light source and here gradually, here as it curves inwards it's also going to gradually go into that darker color. So this part protrudes more than this one here 
So this one goes inside and gradually turns away from our light, so it becomes gradually darker. And this area receives more light, uh, less light than this one. So there we go. Okay, so far so good. Then our eyelid curves together with our eyeball and this area is going to catch a highlight. So this part of our eyelid is going to be darker as it turns away from the light. And also here it's going to turn more away than this area here, so let's add some light to it. Oh, too far. There we go. So this is our top eyelid. Now let's do the same thing for our lower eyelid. We know that it's going to catch the highlight. Let's make it pinkish here. On this upper part of it, the one that shows the thickness. So this is going to catch the highlight, but as it curves away from the light, we're going to darken it down a bit here. So this area here is going to catch the most highlight. And then it's going to curve away from the light source and it's going to become darker. And then it's going to go back into the cheek and become lighter again. But here is where it becomes darker. And also here a bit, because this area is going to catch more light, it's going to be lighter than this area. And then it's going to cast a small, tiny shadow here. Now, what we are lacking is the tear duct. So let's give it some darker color because it's tucked away, but it's going to be lit in by the light source more. And it's going to have a highlight definite highlight here. Now, what we're missing is shadows. This is, why, this is why our eye looks so flat still. So our lids are going to cast the shadows onto our eye. So I'm going to go over this area here. And you will see how this gives the eye more dimension. So I'm not going for a perfect drawing here. I'm not going into blending techniques or anything. I just want you to see the basic shapes. So here we see the shadow creating over the eye from the top lid. I think we can darken it a bit more here. We lost that edge here that goes deeper in. Now, what we're missing here are some shadows at the bottom part here as it curves into our eyeball curves into and meets with the lower lid. And now, one more trick that I will show you. Let's take a lighter color. And right at the part where we have our lower lid meeting with our eyeball, as our eyeball is moist, we will have very tiny highlights hitting our eyeball. Just at the bit where our eyelid meets with our eyeball. So you can see that this already looks more dimensional. So um, this is just a schematic drawing of an eye. Then of course you can go and create better blending and everything and all these kind of patterns in the eye and just work on it um, more and create these eyelashes. Also remember that eyelashes, they kind of clump together and these eyelashes, they're shorter and they come out of this side and how they curve also around the eye. So this is detail. So for this video, I didn't want to show you the details. I wanted to show you the construction of the eye. So if you know the construction of the eye, you will always draw good eyes, even though if you don't add as many details, um, they will still look good because you will know how to shape a three-dimensional form. So if we turn this now into, let's add a layer of saturation. There we go with the saturation. Let's make it into a grayscale. You can still see that it's a 3D shape. 
So this is the most important thing, to have your values right. Even here, if we put back the saturation, if we added this lighter skin tone here where the skin catches more light. Oh, okay, let's go back onto the layer. So if I add, oh, okay. <laughs> if I add a lighter highlight here, we can even add it and also here on this eyelid where it catches more light and here. So this is going to just add to that sensation of 3D. And that's the most important thing. So we have this eye that looks as a three-dimensional shape. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. And if you would like to see other tutorials about other body parts, I will be happy to post them as well. Um, let me know what you think about it in the comments or if you have any questions as well, I will be happy to answer them. If you did like this video, please cl click like and subscribe to my channel. I will be very happy if you do. And I will see you in the next tutorial video. Uh, for now, this is it. Bye.